Remember that scene in Jurassic Park? Nope, not that one. Or that one. Classic. But no. Okay, well, obviously that scene absolutely slaps, but not that one either. It's this one. The one where our heroes are treated to an explainer of how scientists were able to bring back dinosaurs by altering their genes and filling in missing sequences. But it also serves as a quick explainer on the very real scientific concept of gene therapy. While something as old as T-Rex isn't likely, gene therapy is on the brink of bringing back more recently extinct animals like the dodo and woolly mammoth. But it also holds serious promise as the key to extending our own lives. In 1900, average human life expectancy was 32 years old. By 2021, that number had more than doubled to 71 years old worldwide. Scientific advancements in medicine, nutrition, and living standards all helped to both drastically decrease infant mortality while increasing adult lifespan. So what's the next step in maximizing the potential of the human lifespan? And can we ever reach triple digits as a worldwide average? Enter Peter Diamandis. He's the founder and chairman of XPRIZE, a nonprofit organization which hosts public competitions to encourage tech development. Today, for every year that you're alive, science is extending your lifespan for about an additional quarter to a third of a year. The question ultimately is when are we gonna reach this thing called longevity escape velocity? Right. There's going to be a point that for every year that you're alive, science is gonna add more than a year to your life. Ray Kurzweil believes 10 to 12 years, George Church 15 to 20 years. So someone who's 50 today is likely to intercept all the breakthroughs that will give them an additional 30 years at a minimum. There's no reason not to make it well past 100. In 2014, Demandis founded Human Longevity Inc. Human Longevity's main effort is to extend human life past 100 years by building the world's most comprehensive database of human genotypes and phenotypes. A genotype is a unique sequence of DNA. It's like a blueprint for you. Everything from your eye color to your blood type to your susceptibility to certain diseases can be identified through your genotype. See? Jurassic Park kind of nailed it. We see you, Mr. DNA. A phenotype however, is a genotype plus every external factor it's ever been influenced by, such as your environment, diet, level of exercise, and so on. Combined with machine learning, Human Longevity believes they can use their database to identify markers for life-shortening diseases and conditions. Dr. Morgan Levine of the Yale School of Medicine explains. The reason why scientists are so excited about the idea of intervening in the aging process, whether it be slowing the aging process or reversing the aging process, is because we actually think that in doing so, we can stop all of the different changes that are giving rise to the diseases that we care about. So rather than going after one disease at a time and having one type of science aimed at trying to cure cancer and another aimed at diabetes, if we actually could reverse or slow aging, we could basically eliminate diseases, or at least postpone diseases across the board. It's great that we're working on disease prevention, but what if someone requires immediate medical intervention to prolong their life? Like, say, an organ transplant? Well, hold on to your butts. Because just like the fictitious act of creating dinosaurs by splicing in frog DNA, gene therapy can also be used to alter animal genes to create viable organ transplants for humans. Imagine a future in which you have a backup set of organs on hold for you. The idea is, can you take a pig that happens to have the same size heart, kidney, lungs as humans, modify 10 surface genes to humanize it, and then they do a kidney transplant as the first one into a man who was on life support. Two months ago, they did a heart transplant into a, a recipient. Diamandis is referring to a process called xenotransplantation. Genetically modifying animal organs is meant to help reduce instances of organ rejection in humans and could theoretically solve the critical shortage of transplantable organs. So while gene therapy may not help us bring back the T-Rex or whatever that spitting one was that got Newman, it might lead us to something far better, the next major leap in medical science. Join us next week when we explain how Back to the Future perfectly lays out Einstein's theory of time dilation. Just kidding, it doesn't. 
at all. Still a good movie, though. 